Hey everybody! Welcome to another Sunday video where every Sunday we learn something together. I asked you guys on Twitter what you wanted to learn today and a lot of you guys said how to write a resume. So that's what we're gonna do today. It seems super scary but it's actually really simple. So let's get into it, shall we? Let's learn together. Do you like my sign? It's resume time! Oh, I didn't put the thingy on the thingy. So a resume is super simple. It's just you telling the person that's hiring you what you're capable of and your past history. There's a million different websites that are like, how to write a resume. This is the right way to write a resume. No, only we know how to write a resume. And yes, they all talk like that. But it's basically you just have to put your qualifications on a piece of paper and not sound like an idiot. I spent so much time on that sign and I just had to erase all of it. This doesn't like to stand up on its own. Stay! Oh, I just made it worse. So if you just t type in resume outline and look at Google Images, there are a million out there. But what I've noticed that they all have in common is this. Uh, there's a lot of websites that say you can go one to two pages, never more than two. Never. If you're writing three pages of stuff, no one wants to read that. I've heard from people who hire people, one pages is basically their max. You can go to two, but it's easier just one sheet done. This is what you do. Name at the top. They need to know your name. It's up to you if you want to put your middle name in or middle initial. That's dealer's choice. Your name is going to be the biggest thing on the piece of paper. It's going to be like, yo, that's my name. Then under that, you're going to have your contact info. Your contact info is going to be your phone number. Now make sure that your voicemail isn't some lame voicemail. Make sure it's not one of those things that's like, hello? Ha! Got you! I'm right there, sucker! Bye! Make sure your voicemail is either just the automated messaging of being like, you've reached and then the phone number, or it's you being like, hi, sorry, I can't get the phone right now. Please leave a message after the beep. Something very strict. They're not gonna hire someone that's like, I just ate bananas! Ha! Oh, leave me a message! And also, your email. Make sure your email is appropriate and it's not some like, I drive race cars to your mother's face! gmail.com. Some places want you to put your online profile thing like LinkedIn or something on there. You have that. Go for it. And then after that, you're gonna put your career objective. One, two sentences. That's just like, what job are you hoping to get? What's your objective with this resume? You are trying to acquire something. What are you trying to do? So you just say that real quick. Like, if you're applying to Taco Bell, hoping to acquire a job as a taco maker. <laughs> Even if you're applying for like a low entry level job, you could be like, I am a applying for a low entry level job, but I'm hoping to later advance to a management position in which I can rule the world. So that's basically it. All right, now after that is your work experience, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna write the company name, its city, and the date you worked there. And then after that, you put down like what you did, what skills you acquired, what you had to manage, all those things right like in bullet points, one to two sentences each, being like, yo, I worked for Taco Bell. Oh, why do I keep using Taco Bell as an example? I don't know, I think I'm hungry? I worked at Taco Bell in Los Angeles from 2009 to 2013. I worked the cash register like a mother trucker. I had to manage five other people while simultaneously making tacos. I learned how to make beans. So I don't think I know what goes into Taco Bell working, but I appreciate the work they do. Gosh, they make good food. So that's what you do there. And then you list all of your job. Another job, 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 done. You wanna make sure that you don't have huge gaps in between your work times. Like I worked from 2009 to 2010, and then I didn't work again until 2013. That doesn't look nice. Also, don't put jobs that you've only had for a day. So if you worked at like Forever 21 for like a week and then quit, I suggest not putting that job on your resume because that does not look good. Whether you got fired or you quit, it doesn't matter. No one wants to hire someone that only can hold a job for a week. All right, now after work experience, you put education experience. What diploma you have, where you went to school, and the dates you went to school. So I would put bachelor's degree, Azusa Pacific University, August 2009, to December 2012, all right? That would be mine. It's very simple. If you're in high school and you're trying to apply for a job, you can put here, still in high school. This is the high school. This is the date I started and the date I will graduate. And then if you have any military experience, thank you for your service. You put it here. I don't know much about that. And then after military, you put your special skills and abilities. If you're applying for a computer job and you're like the world's 
fastest typer, I suggest you put that on the resume. Like if you've been awarded fastest typer in the entire world and you're applying for like a typing job, I think it would be the best idea to put that in the special skills and abilities section, don't you? So that's basically it. Now there's different formats you can do. Like you can do this where it's just like, here's the thing, info underneath. Here's another thing, info underneath. Or some people like to do it like this, name at the top and then contact info and then all the stuff's here. And then it's like work experience, all stuff here, all stuff here. It's the same information. It's just formatted a little differently. So I suggest just looking through templates and saying which one you like the best, which form format do you like? I think that's really up to you because I've read like 60 different websites this morning and all of them said different things. But I think the main thing is you can put that information on a piece of paper and make it readable. I don't think an employer is going to have that big of a complaint. Now, if you have no work experience and you're still in high school, then you would do more of like a special skills resume. I got an itch in my armpit. Hold on. Ah! So you would look up like a different kind of format of a resume where it's based on more of a skills than work experience. A functional resume, if you will. So you use a functional resume if you have gaps in your employment, if you've changed your career a lot. Also, that's another thing. Don't show that you've constantly changed your career choice. No one likes a flip flopper. So for a functional resume, you do the same thing as always. Name, contact info. Wow, that's terrible writing. It's like I'm a doctor or something. And then you do your qualifications summary. This allows you to de-emphasize specific dates of when you worked or stuff. So you just basically summarize why you're so qualified for that position. Four to five sentences, four to five examples of why you're qualified for this. And then next you do relevant skills. It's like if you're applying at a clothing store, you'd be like, good salesman or woman. I don't know you. And then you do bullet points like two to three bullet points of how to prove you're a good salesman. Like I sold the most, or I got awarded employee of the month, or I had really good uh, em reviews from customers that I was a good employee. And then like another relevant skill would be like, I'm good with technology. And then more bullet points of being like, I always fix the registers. I took so many technology classes and things like that. Or, and then you're just like, I'm personable. And then more bullet points of how you're personable. And like that's that section basically. And then of course you add education, same as before. For references, I forgot about this. Wow, my writing is not legible at all. You always need to add references. If you have work history, add a phone number and a boss's name to like people they can call and be like, did this person actually work there? How are they? But seriously, resumes are not that difficult. There's a million templates out there. Just go and find the one that fits you and make sure that like your special skills or whatever, like your resume is t catered to the job that you're applying for. Like, I don't think that Google cares that you eat the most burgers in 10 minutes. Like, be smart. Figure out where you're applying to and what they would want out of you. I hope that's helped some of you. It's not that difficult. They seem scary. Just don't stress out. Make sure everything looks good because people are only going to look at it for a glance. They're not going to spend a really long time reading through everything. So just make sure that when you look at it real quick, you can see things, everything's laid out properly. All right. So that's it for today. If you want to learn something, subscribe. I teach you guys something every Sunday. Other than that, I also post videos Tuesday and Thursday, which are comical videos. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, but remember guys, above all else, stay awesome possums.